My name is Carter Ponce. I study statistics at the University of Toronto. And today we are going to be diving deep into one of the greatest mysteries in the history of all time. No, I'm not talking about the Titanic submersible. We already know what happened there. I'm talking about a much larger question. I guarantee this has crossed the minds of every single human being on the face of Earth at least one time. And I'm here to provide an answer. I'm here to provide a solution for you. A solution for the question that is, how many QR codes exist? How many are there? I was at a restaurant the other day and the menu was digitalized. It was not, there were no real menus. You scanned a QR code and you ordered your food that way. And I thought, are they not eventually gonna run out of these QR codes? Everyone's using them for everything. There has to come a time when there's just that much. So that led me to go on this mathematical journey that I'm about to take you on. By the end of this video, you're going to be far more informed, far more mathematically literate than you were before you clicked on this video. If you're able to truly grasp the knowledge I'm about to transfer to you through this camera at your next family event, dinner party, whatever it is, you pull this one out and you ask everyone, guys, how many QR codes do you think there are? How many, how many guys? Pick a number, how many do you think exist? No. Who knows? And everyone's gonna get it wrong because everyone's foolish and didn't watch this video like you did. Then you're gonna come in with the genius explanation I'm about to give to you. So pay attention. Here we go. Let's take a standard QR code, 25 by 25, right? Every square on this code can be one of two colors, black or white, except for the three corners, there are eight by eight squares in the top left, top right, and bottom left. Those can't change. Those are predetermined, preset, black or white. We already know what they're gonna be. Every QR code's the same. There's also a tiny little square in the bottom right. Not all the way in the corner, but just there in the corner. That's always the same as well. So what we need to do is find the number of squares that can change from code to code, either black or white. Once again, every code has these three corners that are predetermined preset. We don't care about that. We only care about the squares that can change from one QR to another, you understand? So we take the full dimension of the code. It's 25 by 25, that's 625 total squares, 25 times 25. We have to subtract the squares that are preset, predetermined. There are three squares that are eight by eight. Eight by eight, that's 64. 64 times three, that's 192 squares. And we also have to have that little square at the bottom right. Five times five, that's 25. Total, we have 217 squares that we need to subtract from our original 625. That gives us 408 squares that can change from black to white from code to code. So we know that now. 408 squares that can change from QR to QR. That is crucial information. Now, before I go on to explain exactly how the math works, I want to shrink this down to a much more digestible size. Think about a coin flip. When you flip a coin, there are one of two possibilities you can achieve, heads or tails. If you flip a coin twice, now instead of possibilities, we're looking at sequences. How many sequences of results can we achieve with two coin flips? Well, you could get tails, tails. You could get tails, then heads. Heads first, then tails, or heads, heads, right? There are four possibilities. If you flip a coin three times, there are eight possibilities. You could have tails, 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 heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, 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 tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, heads. Those are the eight. The higher and higher we go up, it would take way too long to try to write out every single possibility. If we're flipping this coin 10 times, we're gonna be here for a while, it's an absolute waste of time. Good thing that math is here to help us find the total number that we need, that we're looking for. So to find the number of possible sequences you can achieve with X number of coin flips, you need to know two things, two numbers, two crucial numbers you need to understand. The first is the base number. This number represents how many possibilities, how many different results can we achieve with one trial. When I flip the coin one time, what are the different possibilities? How many different possibilities are there? In the case of a coin flip, there are two. There are only two possibilities with one coin flip. It's either heads or tails. If we were rolling a die, the base number would be six because there are six possibilities with one roll. You could get any number from one to six. That's our base number. Two possibilities in a coin flip. The second number that we need to know is how many times are we gonna flip the coin? Do we wanna flip it twice? We want to flip three times, do you want to flip it a hundred times? That's the second thing. And after that, it's very easy. Okay, so we have our base number, which is two. And let's say we want to flip the coin 
two times. The number of possibilities is simply two to the power of two. The base number being heads or tails and the exponent being the number of flips. Now think about it. If we flip it three times, the base number is still two, heads or tails, and the exponent becomes three. We're flipping it three times. And the exponent pretty much just represents, if you really have no math knowledge, just the number of times the base number is going to get multiplied by itself. Two to the power of two is simply two times two. Two to the power of three is two times two times two. Okay. So if we want to flip the coin three times, there are eight possibilities. Two times two, four times two, eight. Okay. Eight different sequences that we can achieve with three flips. Now, if we expand this and we bring this back into the context of QR codes, it's the exact same thing. It is the exact same thing. Think of each square in the code as its own coin flip. There are one of two possibilities for each square, black or white. That's it. It's no red. It's no f***ing pink. It's black or white. That's it. There are only two possibilities. How many squares are there? That is the number of flips we're going to have. That's the number of trials, 408 squares. So we have to do two times two times two times two times two, 408 times to find the number of different QR codes. Do you understand that reasoning? Do you understand the math? Because that's all it is. That's it. That's all we need to know. Then we just plug that into a calculator. Two to the power of 408. If you try to do it on your phone, you're going to get f***ed because that number is so big that you need to go onto some online calculator. I just looked up big number calculator and came out with this result. Two to the power of 408 gives this mess right here. This number is so big, there aren't even English words to describe the size of this number. To make it simple for you, if you're trying to tell people how many possible QR codes there are, you can use 661 and 120 zeros. Think of how insanely large that is. So there you have it. That is QR codes explained. I've given you the number of potential QR codes that could possibly exist. Now, at your next family event, please try this out yourself. Ask the family, how many QR codes do you think there are? Now you might have a jackass uncle who says, what about the QR codes with the logos in the middle? Tell him to get f***ed. We're looking at the normal classic QR codes there are a bunch of weird ones nowadays that I genuinely don't understand. This would be a 30 minute long video if I had to go into all the weird shit that's now going on with technology and QRs that I just simply can't explain. Like look at this one here. This is like a bat QR. You can scan it too. I scanned it. It actually gives something. I don't know what's going on now, but the, the classic traditional 25 by 25 QR code, there are a lot of them. Anyways, thank you for watching. Hope this was educational. Hope you learned something from this. Now, I did say that I was a U of T stats student. I am. I'm minoring in stats, but uh, this is pretty basic probability math. I didn't learn this in university. I learned this from high school. So if you need to rewatch it, rewatch it, grasp the idea of the coin flip. Okay. It's really easy to understand at a smaller scale, but once you actually get a good grasp on that, the rest of it is easy. So anyways, you can use this at your next family event. You know, if you're trying to sound like a genius or if you want to impress a girl well maybe i don't know i don't know how many girls will be impressed by you knowing how many qr codes there are girls like smart guys that's for sure but i don't know this this one's a little dorky maybe once you're finished explaining it you can like set the qr code and have her scan it and it's like a video of you doing push-ups or something I don't, I don't know whatever you want to do i know a lot of smart people who are very linguistic they're very trenchant communicators the math side of the brain is a completely different form of intelligence so anyone can use this and sound like they know numbers anyways that's all hope summer's been going well follow us on instagram at voices of vic subscribe to the channel so i can provide you with even more fantastic knowledge check out the bov podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and that'll be all. See you next week. Peace out.